Hello class, welcome to chapter three. We've already done 3.1 and this is the lecture for 3.2. We are going to be graphing sine and cosine waves. But before we get to that, I wanted you to just get some visual idea about why predicting parts of waves is cool. So here is a video that I would like for you to go click on and watch and see these kids surfing. And it's actually in an airport in Germany. Wouldn't this be cool if you were waiting for a flight, if you could watch this? So go check it out, uh, have a look at that, and uh, come back here when it's done. Welcome back. So like I said, this is the lecture for 3-2, simple harmonic motion, normal, ordinary sine and cosine waves understanding the dynamics and pieces and parts and labels of sine waves. So the title may make you think simple. Well, just feeling pretty good about this here. Why do I need simple harmonic motion? Shouldn't I just be ready to deal with any kind of this sort of stuff? Let's, let's actually get into it, Murph. Well, the problem with that is, as you can see, simple harmonic motion makes a nice little circle over here. Compound harmonic motion is this crazy twisty thing over there that really quickly gets out of control. So what they've done here is they've got a spring uh, with a weight on it and just let it go and in assuming a frictionless universe it'll just bounce up and down and not be too complicated. But all you have to do is take like a grandfather clock uh, pendulum and attach another pendulum on the bottom of it and it gets so out of control so fast it'll make your head swim. So well, let's just stick to the basics here. Let's stick to simple harmonic motion and try to make sure we have an understanding of that. Now, when I say understanding, you know that there's multiple ways that this could mean. Those kids in that video, the ones who were able to stand up and feel the wave, they had an understanding in their body. I'm always very impressed with so many of my students are so good at sports and I'm so bad at sports that you can understand things with your body or you can understand things with your mind or you can understand things with your empathy and your feelings and that kind of uh, skills are all very different. So looking here at this sine wave, there's some terminology that we need to get straight if we're going to understand it with our rational minds. So the first big vocabulary word, we've already talked about this, is the period. That we've talked about all of these being periodic functions. Periodic functions have a period, a set length before the pattern repeats over and over again. So the easiest one when you look here is to say from 0 to 360, that's one whole cycle of the pattern. But really that 360 width could happen anywhere and you could go from the top there at negative 270 to the top at 90, that's a distance of 360. The next vocabulary word that we have to deal with is amplitude. This is referring to how far away are we going either in the up direction or in the down direction. It's not the total height of the wave. That would be twice the amplitude. It is the distance uh, from the, the midline to the top or to the bottom. And that midline is the last fancy word. That's called the axis. There's an axis running right down through the middle of the wave that then the amplitude goes down from there or up from there, as the case may be. Now. There's a lot of pieces of sign that have rotten, difficult values. But the main ones that you should be able to then take with you as we stretch and skew and mess with sine waves are 0, 30, 45, 60, and 90. The rest are all just versions of those that they just get flipped around, you remember, through the four quadrants. So what is sine of 30? So I think about a 30, 60, 90 triangle opposite the 30 is the 1, the hypotenuse was 2, so it's half. What is sine of 45? Well that's 1 over root 2 or root 2 over 2. That's not an easy value to know, but it's approximately with rounding 0 0.707. So that's a sort of ballpark figure for us to keep straight. And then the last one that you know exact value of is 60, which is root 3 over 2, which ends up being around 0.866. So armed with those, we can see 
45, so, so 30, that was half. So even by, by just the, the half, uh, the, a third of the way to 90 degrees, a third of the way through that sort of initial ascending curve, uh, just a third the way in, we're already at half up. So the reason I bring this all up is that kids get real tempted to draw sine waves as if they were just triangles. And you've got to get up a lot sooner. It's a, you'd be better off drawing semicircles than you would be uh, drawing v, Vs and, and Ws, that the, the curve gets up there really fast. So I think... In the, in the practice problem we'll do in class here, we're gonna, we're gonna practice plotting a bunch of little points and you'll see it gets up there really fast. The curve moves pretty quickly around that time. So here we have the generic equation for a, a trig function, a sine or a cosine wave. And you can see that there are four letters other than x that and y that we're using here to sort of describe it. And this is exactly what we did in chapter one, where you've got a multiple on the outside that will make it taller or skinnier. You've got a multiple on the inside that'll make it uh, less wide or more wide. You've got an addition or subtraction on the inside that'll move it left or right but opposite of what you expect. And you've got an addition or subtraction on the outside that'll move it up and down. So this A, this multiplier on the outside, is the amplitude. This is the nice thing about sine and cosine is that normally their amplitude is one. So if we multiply by anything, that'll just take the amplitude A times one is just A. And since amplitude is a measure of distance, it's always positive. Technically, there's an absolute value bar there. Not going to get too carried away with that. C is the left and right shift. And in this formula here, in the book, we're, we, they put a minus sign. Because this is, remember, this is the weird one from chapter one that does the opposite of what you would expect. Is that a negative number, you would think that that would move you to the left, but instead it moves you to the right, and vice versa. It's very strange. D is going to just straight up tell you where the axis is. This is another great thing about sine and cosine is that normally their axis is at zero. So if we add anything to it, that's the new axis. If we subtract anything from it, that's the new axis. But you'll notice here that I have left off explaining one particular letter. Haven't talked about the letter B in this because that's the hard one. So let's not deal with that yet. Let's take a second. Let's have you graph this function right here, you can use your calculator, that's fine, but you need to be able to tell me about its period, its amplitude, its axis. Practice this on your own, graph this in your calculator, but make sure you can name those three things. All right, we are back and we are looking at this graph and presumably in your calculator or by hand, you've got something that is not the normal sine wave that looks like that, but you've made it, well, first of all, let's, let's talk about that two out front. What did that do? What did the first two do? This, this one right here. Well, it made everything twice as tall so that instead of going up from negative one to one, we go from negative two to two. But then we need to take everything and move it all up two. So the real graph, the actual graph here, needs to be this same thing, but up two. Because this second two, because this second two on the outside moves everything up. Okay, so here's a better graph than I can draw. You can see that the midline is at 2, the amplitude is 2, the period is still 360. Right. Now, we've got some other vocabulary word that Forrester likes to deal with here. We've mentioned these terms before. Again, you're not super responsible for these. We're building your familiarity with these terms. They'll come up more and more as the year progresses. But we talked about concave up and concave down. And in between those, where those two meet, is an inflection point. So here's your first time to hear that word. Not a big deal, just something to slowly get used to. And you can see how much that matters in a sine wave. We've got high points, low points, uh, midpoint, which is the axis. Uh, and on, on the axis, there will always be those inflection points where we switch from concave up to concave down. 
Now, now this B value, like we said in chapter one, it does the opposite of what you would expect. You would think my gut reaction, like I said before, would be that a multiplier on the inside, a big number would make it wider, but instead it does the opposite. It's dividing. So if we have a multiple on the inside, a B on the inside of our generic trig function equation, it's going to divide the normal period by that B. So for example, what would happen if we tried to graph sine 2x? Well normally sine x has a period of 360 and we're not going to be twice as wide, we're going to be half as wide. So we're going to have a period of 180 instead of the usual 360. What about cosine 30x? Well, normally cosine has a period of 360 degrees, and we're going to make that 30 times smaller. So not 360 divided by 30 is the same as 36 divided by 3. That's 12. So now we're going to have a period of a mere 12 units in the x direction. So here, if assuming that your power level is over 9,000, let's try to graph this one here, where we combine all those pieces. So put it in your calculator. You probably, you, you're going to have one more set of parentheses than I do here on this slide. You're going to have a parentheses that starts before the 30 and a second closed parentheses after the 4. But go ahead and use your calculator, that's fine, but you have to be able to describe to me what's going on and what all the pieces did. So where's the midline, the axis, uh, what is the amplitude, what is the period, you need to be able to say all of those. All right, we are back and we are graphing this great big crazy equation here that's out of control difficult. Turns out it's not so bad. The 7 in the front makes it 7 times taller. The uh, 30 on the inside makes it 30 times narrower. The plus 4 moves it 4 to the left. And the negative 5 moves it 5 down. So you should be looking at an equation about like this. Now I've added the midline in this graph. So you can see up there at negative 5, that's the middle of everything because of that negative 5 on the outside of the equation. And then from there, we go down 7 and up 7. And the entire period to get from the same spot on the wave to the same spot on the wave, uh, look up there at negative 1 and see when do we get to that peak again. Aha, it happens there at 11. So that's how you can see then that this, uh, this period of 12, how that's played out in this example. So very similar to these sine waves is a cosine wave. And a cosine wave is exactly the same, except instead of starting at the middle and going up, a cosine wave is like a sine wave that starts at the top and is going down. So at the start of the period, at the beginning, at the, when you plug in 0, you're up at the top at 1, and then it goes down and back up over the course of a whole period. So co cosine, very, very similar, except we're starting at the top. And really, hopefully, you're starting to see enough of these now to recognize that one is just the left or right shifted version of the other. Very, very similar. So take a second, pause the video, and try to predict what the equation would be for this graph right here. I'll tell you right now, if you're watching this with a buddy, there are multiple, multiple right answers. Technically, there are infinite right answers. But I'm going to show you three when we come back from the pause. Try to figure this one out, write down an equation, and check and see if you're right. All right, we're back, and we're looking at this equation. We're trying to figure it out. Now, so the, the obvious feature is that it's got this midline right here at 2. That's pretty obvious. And then how far are we going up from that? 1, down 1, amplitude of 1. That's pretty nice. I look down at the bottom of the wave to the, the next bottom of a wave, same spot to same spot, and that's 360. So we haven't messed with the period. That's gonna, there's going to be no B. B is 1. And then I have to say, well, is it a cosine wave that started uh, over there? Is it a cosine wave that got flipped over? Is it a sine wave that got moved over? Actually, any of those is appropriate. 
So here the first one would be to say, well, it's a cosine wave that's been flipped over. Instead of starting at the top and going down, it starts at the bottom and goes up. That's a perfectly valid option. Another option would be to say that it's a cosine wave. It starts at the top and it's been moved over. It's been moved uh, off to the side 180. And that first peak over there is where it got started. Another valid option would be to say that it's a sine wave that got moved over a little bit less. All of these are valid options. So anything like this, you could move any of those left and right 360. You could, you could try all kinds of different ways to find this. But as long as your graph and your calculator looks like this, you got it right. And I'll accept any of those. That's the hard part about being a trig teacher. Sometimes I have to accept an infinite number of different kinds of answers. So, what I would like for you to do for uh, class is on page 103 to just try to make a, uh, a equation to match number six there. So just look at number six on page 103 and find one equation that describes the graph of number six. Again, infinite number of possible answers. There's a lot of different ways that you can be right. We're flexible here in trig class. So, Hope you have a great day, and I'll see you in class.